When it comes to getting started on investing, there is no better time than the present. And if you are in your 20s, then time becomes your biggest asset, which makes it a lot easier for you to achieve most of your financial goals. Now, deciding on how to invest money in your 20s can seem a bit formidable at first, with many people giving different and very isolated opinions. So in this video, we have compiled some essential investing specific strategies that anyone and everyone in their 20s should apply. And if you're not in your 20s but are still new to investing, then too the contents of this video will serve as a good checklist and a timely refresher for you. With that being said, let's begin. Most people in their 20s approach investing by delaying it. What I mean is that they often come up with beliefs that they have a lot of time on their side and a delay of 5 or 10 years will not make any difference to them in terms of achieving their financial goals. But in all honesty, it is this procrastination that makes all the difference between achieving all your financial goals with relative ease versus maybe achieving it with a lot of hardship. Now there are two excellent ways to get started and we suggest you do both of them. Firstly, enroll in an EPF or the Employee Provident Fund scheme through your organization, which will immediately start feeding money into your retirement account. And secondly, start a mutual fund SIP through an investing platform like ET Money. The idea behind starting an SIP is for you to remove any resistance to investing. So you'll have your account set up, you would have invested some money, which need not be a lot, and it can be as small as 500 rupees. But the importance of that small investment is that you will get to see your money growing on the platform, which will then act as a greater incentive and motivator for you to invest. So come what may, don't overthink and just start your investing journey. One of the flaws of our education system is that it does not cover subjects like money, investing and personal finance. This means it is left to you to make time and effort to learn the essential financial skills. And therein lies the opportunity. Because the more you learn, the more organized your finances will be and the less likely are you to fall for scams and mis-selling practices. So what should you learn? After all, there is a lot to learn, but if you're in your 20s and you're just getting started, then get the ball rolling with the five pillars of personal finance, which are budgeting, saving, investment products, financial metrics, and taxes. Information on all these five areas can be easily found on websites, blogs, books, podcasts, and of course on YouTube. In fact, the ET Money YouTube channel entirely focuses on investing and personal finance matters, which can be an ideal knowledge repository for you. So if you haven't done that yet, then do subscribe to our channel and tap the bell icon for timely alerts. When I talk to people in their 20s, most of them, in fact, almost every one of them seem to have two goals. A, I want to retire by the age of 40, okay? And B, I want to earn one crore by my 30th birthday. In all honesty, both these goals are truly possible and there are many who have done it. And the one thing all these achievers have had in common was that they had a financial plan on how to get there. So if you haven't started creating your goals, we recommend you start off with three basic financial goals for yourself. Goal number one, set up an emergency fund, which should typically be about three to six months of your expenses. Let's call it the emergency goal. Goal number two is your wealth goal, which is a lot like having one crore by the age of 30. So write that down as well. And goal number three is your retirement goal, which can be something big like having 10 crores by the age of 60. Of course, these are some basic goals and you can add more goals to it, like owning a 4 BHK apartment, annual vacations, your daughter's education, etc. Now, once you have these goals, it's time to lay down the plan. After all, a goal without a plan is only a dream. And a plan need not be complicated. In fact, there are only three things that one needs to focus on. The timing, that is when to do what and for how long. The investment, that is how much money goes where. And finally, the instrument, that is whether to use debt, use equity or any other asset class. 
For instance, goal number one is to build that emergency fund. And I'm sure everyone will agree that we need to do this ASAP. So here's the plan for this. We have six months to create our emergency fund. We use liquid or maybe money market funds to build this. And we need to invest 20,000 rupees every month for the next six months. And that's pretty much how you can go about creating a plan for each of your financial goals. It's an exercise that can be done quite easily on an Excel sheet. And if you talk to anyone in their late 30s or 40s or 50s, they tell you how important is it to have a plan like this. So if you're serious about taking charge of your financial future, then do block a couple of hours this weekend and start mapping your priorities. Bhai, kya kare? Kharcho ke baad investment ke liye to kuch bachta hi nahi hai. It's a statement we've heard often and the equation here works like this. Income minus expenses results in what one can save and it is this saving that is then invested. So if most of your income goes into expenses, then you have very little or nothing to put towards investing. This formula often acts as a justification for many people in their 20s to delay their investments, but fortunately that need not be the case. In fact, this problem might be more of a reframing issue, which can be easily solved by simply swapping the expenses and the savings part. In effect, our new equation will be income minus savings, which then gives us the amount that can be allocated towards expenses. In other words, you're now encouraging yourself to keep aside some money and it need not be a lot of money, but maybe a thousand rupees or 2000 rupees a month, which can then go into your investment account. This way you not only ensure that you're moving towards your financial goals, but are also challenging yourself to make small but manageable changes in your everyday expenses without massively altering your lifestyle. So remember, investment karne ke baad jo paisa bachega, ghar aur kharcha unhi paiso se chalega. Short-term goals like a vacation or the creation of an emergency fund do not need too much money. These goals come within 2 or 3 lakhs and instruments like debt funds or fixed deposits are sufficiently equipped to handle these situations. However, it is your longer term goals of buying a house, children's education, retirement, etc. where you need a lot more money which can even run into a few crores. The ideal asset strategy for long-term investing is to allocate a higher proportion of it to equities. In fact, a thumb rule which works perfectly in the 20s is the 100 minus age rule. Per this rule, the difference of 100 and your age is ideally the percentage of equity you need to have in your portfolio. For example, if you are 26 years old, then 100 minus 26, that is 74% of your long-term investments need to be in equity instruments. Now, equities as an asset class are more volatile when you compare it with other asset classes like fixed deposits or debt instruments. Notice I used the word volatile and not risky, and that's because if history is our guide, Equity investments made in India's broader market indices like the Nifty and the Sensex have never given a negative return if you have held them for a period of seven years or more. Of course, there have been and there will be periods of ups and downs with equities, but it's something that investors in their 20s are better equipped to absorb as compared to someone in their 50s. But having said this, it is also advisable for young investors not to put their money in anything that they don't understand. This includes things like cryptocurrencies, futures, options, and even stocks, if you don't understand how these are priced and valued. And please don't get me wrong, the 20s are the best time to take a higher risk, but these still need to be calculated risks and not blind faith. So be smart and operate in areas that you do understand or areas that you want to learn more about. And if you don't understand something, then leave it to professional fund managers who can do a better job with your money. One of the most visible advantages of automation is that it makes things easy. This is true in a factory, in an office, and is also the case when it comes to investing. 
The most effective way of automating your investments is by setting up a systematic investment plan or SIP which is offered by most fund houses. Quite simply, an SIP is a system which effects the purchase of units in a mutual fund scheme of your choice for a particular amount and on a particular date every month. And since an SIP can start from as low as 500 rupees, even 100 rupees in some cases, it is something everyone in their 20s should start on an immediate basis. In fact, the ET Money app is the perfect SIP platform where we can get you started in just a few minutes. And to give a glimpse of what an SIP can really do for you, here's a table that indicates the final corpus one can accumulate in 10, 20 and 30 years using different monthly SIP amounts. For the purpose of this illustration, we have used a CAGR of 12% per annum, which is a reasonable estimate for the long term stock market growth story in India. So for example, if you set up a monthly SIP of 10,000 rupees, then you can accumulate a little over 3.5 crores at the end of 30 years, assuming a 12% annual returns. Now what's interesting here is that in these 30 years, you, the investor, has put up only a fraction of the 3.5 crores. In fact, in numbers, you've invested only 36 lakhs in this 30 year period and the remaining 3.26 crores has come from your compounding gains. And that's the magic of disciplined investing plus time, which can do wonders for your money. If you want to dabble around with some more permutations and combinations, then do access the SIP calculator on the ET Money website. I've also attached the calculator's URL in the description of this video. Yes, there is free lunch. And if you are a salaried person, then this comes in the form of the Employee Provident Fund Scheme, which is quite simply a retirement program onto which your employer signs you up and diverts some part of your compensation, which then earns you interest on an annual basis. Now, the really cool part of this program is that the money that is extracted from your compensation as the employee's contribution is matched with an equal amount by your employer, which practically means that half of the money contributed in your name comes free to you. There are some smaller terms and conditions around this. So if you want to have a detailed understanding of EPF, then do check out our comprehensive video on what an EPF is, how it works, and how you can take the maximum advantage of this essential program. But the crux of the matter is, if you haven't been paying attention to EPF until now, then it's time for you to pull out your salary slip and see if your employer and your contributions are matching the way it is supposed to do. And this concludes our learnings and suggestions on how someone in their 20s should approach investing. The 20s are a wonderful period of time in one's life and by sincerely setting up some of the practices that we have discussed in this video, one will not only enjoy their 20s, but its positive effects will be felt when you move into your 30s, 40s and beyond. Here's wishing you the very best and do subscribe, do like and do share this video with your friends and family. Thank you for your time and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.